Hey, welcome to Real Vision. My name is Santiago Velez, uh, co-founder of Block Digital Corporation. And today I'm excited to bring to you Mr. McLean Wilkinson. He's the CEO of New Cipher uh, and now a contributor to the Threshold Network. Welcome, McLean. Thanks, Santiago. Hey, everyone. Great to be here. Excellent. So uh, today I'd love to do deep dives on all things cryptography, which is, I think, the main focus of what you guys are trying to achieve. Uh, but before we get into that, I'd like to learn a little bit about you and your project. Uh, first, mm -hmm. can you tell us uh, you know, where you come from, your, your uh, origin story, and how sure. you got into cryptography? Sure. So my uh, introduction to blockchain and cryptography and cryptocurrency came back in 2013. So I moved out to the Bay Area because I was interested in you know, technology startups and hacking and you know, wanted to, to just sort of immerse myself in that culture. And I, I was working out of, at the time, a place called Hacker Dojo, which was kind of like a hacker space um, that uh, people that were either trying to not really focus on startups so much, but just people that were hackers wanted to build interesting things, whether it was software, hardware based, would just sort of hang out. Uh, and they would do events there. And one of the events that I sort of randomly stumbled into, because I thought it sounded interesting, was the SF Bitcoin Developers User Group. Uh, and this was back in 2013 at the time. Um, and there were five of us in that uh, in that meetup. So it was, it was me, uh, the guy uh, who I ended up co-founding New Cypher with, Michael Egorov, who, who later started Curve Finance, the stablecoin DEX. Uh, Tom Ding, one of the founders of Definity. And Zucky Manian, one of the early uh, early contributors to the Cosmos ecosystem, so like kind of a crazy group. Uh, now that I look back at it, like on it, like the the amount of, of, of very large uh, important projects that ended up coming out of that that five person meetup um, back in 2013 uh, was pretty remarkable. Um, but after that meetup, I, I just sort of fell down the rabbit hole um, of Bitcoin originally. Um, this was kind of before Ethereum had launched and Vitalik was on his roadshow. So Michael uh, and I just sort of started working on a bunch of different things together at the time on top of Bitcoin. Uh, so there, was, <clears throat> there were these uh, protocols called uh, Counterparty and Mastercoin that were kind of ways to add some additional functionality on top of, of, of Bitcoin. And we just started playing around with those tools and, and experimenting with things and trying to just get a better, better understanding of one you know, Bitcoin, blockchain, how that worked, and then also like what sorts of things that you could build on top of that. Um, and at the time, of course, like since Ethereum wasn't around, like this idea of dApps existed, but it was very much an idea. There were there were no dApps, um, but it was it was very kind of obvious, like if, if that were ever, if that vision of dApps were to ever happen, like there were a bunch of very obvious uh, infrastructure gaps at the time. And one of the ones that just resonated a lot with with Michael and I uh, was this idea of data privacy. So if you have a dApp, um, presumably just like any centralized application like that dApp might have to deal with sensitive or private information. And there was just no obvious way to handle that in the context of uh, a public blockchain. Uh, so that was kind of the problem that we we focused in on. And we were exploring different types of cryptography that we could use to try to solve this problem. And one of the more interesting ones was this idea of proxy re-encryption. And basically, that's well. That's one now today. That's one of the core underlying technologies of of, Fox, of, of New Cipher and, and Threshold, along with a bunch of other Threshold cryptographic primitives. But proxy encryption was basically a way for us to kind of implement uh, this ability to do access controls in a public network setting. Um, so you encrypt data client side before you upload it to um, some storage layer, and then you have the ability to now grant and revoke access to that encrypted data to other users, um, other recipients of that data using this um, kind of clever proxy re-encryption technology. Um, so that was kind of the, the genesis story uh, of New Cypher. And we, uh, we, we ended up, uh, uh, when 2017 came around and like the app started becoming a thing, we we're like, okay, well, let's, let's start implementing this and building this as a network that uh, people can use as part of their sort of middle, middleware infrastructure layer. Um, and went through a bunch of iterations of, of early, early test nets. Um, to get that functional and working, and then um, ended up launching on, on mainnet in, in October of 2020. So we've been running on mainnet for almost a year and a half now at this point, I guess, slightly slightly less. That's excellent. That's a, an incredible story. Also, uh, you know, this core team of five that kind of grew into these huge ecosystems, it's, it's very much like the, the seeds in the ground analogy. You know, you never can anticipate which one is kind of is going to grow in, into this major force and 
that core team seemed to to, to be doing mm-hmm. just that. And one of the things I find interesting about the story is concurrently with all that, we, we've seen a lot of Web2, the traditional centralized data architectures uh, being hacked. Just it's a constant theme of, you know, centralized repositories of data. It's a perfect attack vector. It, it's, the the cybersecurity is poor. Um, and now we get this decentralized technology. So First of all, how would you differentiate what New Cipher came up with, um, you know, decentralization aside from something, uh, say, you would use on AWS? Like, how uh, mm-hmm. would a company understand the, the, the basic difference? Like, what are the properties? Is sure. it really that is it you have an admin role prior to and just users, and now it's users and users? How, how does that work? Yeah, I think I think that's exactly right. So basically, what New Cipher and now Threshold does is we just put control and sovereignty into the hands of the end user. So if you are using, you know, let's throw out blockchain and, and even proxy encryption entirely and just say like, you want to implement access controls in your centralized application on AWS. You have some server that, you know, your, you or your, your legal entity controls that basically decides who and who cannot access uh, a piece of data. Um, Proxy re-encryption basically just gets rid of that paradigm entirely and say, no, it's not, we're not going to enforce access controls at the server layer. We're going to just basically push that to the end user. So you or I, um, we will encrypt our data, you know, client side, like on our phone or on our personal device, upload it somewhere. This could be AWS S3 centralized storage layer. It could be a decentralized storage layer like IPFS or, or storage or swarm uh, or are we? And then at that point, we're the only ones, all right, who can access that data. It's encrypted. We're the only one with the key. Now, if we want to make that data more usable, and let's say it's health data that we want to share with our doctor or insurance provider, for example, uh, you can use proxy re-encryption to grant access to that encrypted piece of data. And how that works is proxy re-encryption is a a special type of encryption that can re-encrypt data. So data encrypted under my key uh, I, let's say I want to delegate that access to that data to, to you, Santiago. I can create a re-encryption key, give that re-encryption key to some node in the new Cypher network. And the only thing that node in the new Cypher network can do with that re-encryption key is re-encrypt it so that you're able to decrypt it with your private key. Uh, that node can't use that re-encryption key for anything else. It can't re-encrypt it for, for, for a malicious actor. It can't even use it to decrypt it itself. Um, so basically, we have this much stronger... Uh, end-to-end encryption plus like the ability to to delegate access um, on the fly. So it seems like, I mean, at first layer here, the, what's really interesting is less the application to decentralized ecosystems, although that's obvious, it's the paradigm shift of saying the responsibility for encryption and security used to reside with a centralized actor. And the, you know, all of the Benefits and burdens of that, you know, are what they are. But now, the opportunity for the end user to control that data as it's going through its life cycle—that's a—that's a fundamental paradigm shift in my my personal opinion. And I think that when you layer that on top of decentralized network architectures, it creates very resilient uh, security architecture. Would you agree with that? That it's the combination of both that paradigm shift and the technology that is really what brings the power, the superpowers out. Yep, I think you're exactly right. Like proxy encryption and cryptography in general, obviously, are are, are very symbiotic with with blockchain and decentralized technology, but they are also useful independently of that. So, actually, when we first started working on 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 the project uh, back in you know, 2013, 2014 this was not a good time to be building blockchain applications, right? There were, frankly, there were no blockchain applications and there was no, you know, venture capital available for, for anyone that was working in the space. So, but we were still very interested in, you know, building this cryptography and bringing it to life. So like we were kind of forced at least for a little while to originally build this, you know, without an explicit blockchain connection, the proxy encryption piece. And, and that's, you know, completely viable. Like this is something that, you know, a centralized service could use to just improve their, their security posture and use it for access control and delegation and, and remove some single points of failure. And so that was like the kind of the original approach that we were kind of forced to take just because it was too early um, to build stuff in, in, in blockchain and decentralized applications. And then obviously once the app started becoming a thing and becoming more viable, uh, we very quickly just 
we're like, okay, we're going to go, we're going to lean into this as much as we can, because that was one, like our, our initial sort of uh, first love when we, when we started at the asset Bitcoin devs user group, but also just the, I think the cultural and sort of um, political alignment of, of blockchain is very closely tied to um, privacy. And, and, and so that, that's a, a very natural fit. Yeah, it seems they, those shared values are um, a, a, basically the best way for the, the technology and the network to grow. It's it, everyone pretty much agrees. I mean, when you talk about, you know, not your keys, not your crypto, it, it really hits to the core that the responsibility resides with the user of these bearer instruments to make sure that whether whether those are digital assets or, you know, a pocket of data that's personal Whatever that bare instrument is, it's their responsibility to make sure that it's it's safe and protected, and it's a burden. Um, and having the correct technology that can allow you to transact in in, in this way is, is super important, in my view. Um, so yeah. the next question I'd ask hey. is, you know, when oh, go ahead. I would just say, and I think that's exactly like basically what we want to do in our mission as 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 a network and as developers is just to build those tools that empower sort of the ability for users to express their sort of independence and their sovereignty on the web. And that's, you know, not everyone is going to want to do that, but some people are. And our view is that that should be an option for the people who, who want to do that. I hope you enjoyed this clip and will decide to join us for the rest of the interview, among many others on realvision.com forward slash crypto. The crypto channel is 100% free. You just have to sign up. Look forward to seeing you there.